Welcome to this application explainer video, part of our SLM 101 topic range. In this video, we'll be covering the subject of user profiles within SLM. The user profile feature enables users to customize their experience within the software according to their preferences and needs. It includes options to update personal information and select view preferences. The following information will be covered in this training. Chapter one, where is the user profile feature? Chapter two, personal information. Chapter three, time zones. Chapter four, application themes. Chapter five, email notifications. Chapter six, automated event record notifications. Chapter seven, view settings. And chapter eight, clear custom configuration. In chapter one, we'll be covering where users can find and access the user profile feature. You can find the update profile feature in the top right hand corner of SLM. Click on the user's name and then click update profile. The system will present a series of configurations that the user can change. In chapter two, we'll be covering how to update personal user information, including full name, email address, phone number, and alternate email address. You can change personal information, like full name, email address, phone number, and alternate email address. Let's go over an example. As we can see, the user's name has changed in the top right hand corner of the application. We can also check the user's account and it's reflecting the changes made in the update profile feature. In chapter three, we'll be covering how to set time zones and the time zone hierarchy levels inside SLM, including user level, site level, and enterprise level. Users can set specific time zones for their accounts. The time zone will be used to render dates and times in SLM accordingly to the time zone selected. There's a hierarchy that SLM follows. If the time zone is not set at the user account level, the system will search for the time zone of the specific site. If the site time zone is not set, it will look for the time zone at the enterprise level. Let's take a look at this scenario. If we have a demand event created on June the 11th, 2011 at 1.50 p.m. Currently, it's taking a look at the time zone at the enterprise level, which is UTC time. Let's go ahead and change the time zone at the site level. Let's refresh. It's now telling me that the date has changed because now it's looking at the time zone at the site level, which is 11 hours less. Now let's go to the user profile and change the time zone there. Let's take a look at the demand event. Now this value has changed to June the 11th at 8.50 a.m. In chapter four, we'll be covering the different themes and application handles within SLM. Users can change the theme of the application. There are two themes, a default one, which is a light theme and a darker one. Themes can be changed from any user module. And that can be done in the top toolbar of the application. In chapter five, we'll be covering how to turn on notification emails and which user actions can generate a notification email, including AER subscriptions, approval policies, action items, data import and export, and checking in and out of projects. Users can enable email notifications. 
These email notifications are used by processes such as exporting data, importing data, object subscriptions, and checking in and out of projects. Let's take a look at an example. Currently, the send email notification is not checked. So let's go ahead and export a SIF. Once the task has been completed, you can see that no email has been generated. Now let's go ahead and check the email confirmation checkbox in the user profile. Let's export the same data object. Once the export has been completed, if I revisit my email inbox, I can see that SLM has sent an email notification stating that the export has completed successfully. In Chapter 6, we will be covering how to enable automated event records in the Operate Maintain module, allowing users to see information from the CGI. Information such as demand events, bypasses, fault events and test events. Users can enable automated event record notifications. These notifications are displayed in the Operate and Maintain module. These notifications are bypass, demand event and fault events that are created within the CGI. Let's go ahead and enable the automated event record. Now, if we go to the Operate and Maintain module, we're going to find an icon in the top toolbar. Once we click that icon, the application will display a list of demand events, bypass activations and faults created by the CGI. If we go back and disable the automated event record notifications and come back to the Operate and Maintain module, those notifications do not show up in the top toolbar. In Chapter 7, we'll be covering configuring the interface elements in the user module template. These include revision tabs, breadcrumbs and link actions. Users can configure their profile and choose to hide revision records, hide object breadcrumbs and open object links in new tabs. We can see that the revisions tab is visible. We can also observe the object breadcrumbs and then we click on a link and the link opens in the same view. Let's hide revision reviews, hide object breadcrumbs and open object links in new tabs. If we refresh the view and try to find the revisions tab, it's no longer visible. The object breadcrumb is no longer visible. And if we scroll down and click an object link, it will open in a new tab. In chapter eight, we'll be covering factory reset custom configurations made by the user in the interface. The user can reset settings such as dashboards and table column groupings and orderings. The clear option data is used to reset interface configurations that the user has set. Let's say that the user generates a report and the user would like to group this report by a specific column. Next time the user generates this report, the report will keep the user's grouping configuration. Even if we go to a different report and we just come back, we generate the report, it will keep that configuration. Now, let's generate a customized dashboard. The user adds one report. If we now clear the data,
if we regenerate that report, it will come back in its uncustomized state, which would not include any grouping. And the user dashboard has also been reset.